All right, hello everybody, welcome. My name is Steve, and this is BISC Brief, call for August 8th, uh, taking the place of the traditional growth calls that we have had for quite a while. Uh, I think they were kind of getting a bit boring. They were kind of uh, very pigeonholed on the software and very BISC specific things, which uh, I guess most people, many people probably weren't too interested in. So we're gonna try to broaden the scope a little bit, um, have a, a theme for every call, uh, have a, a, a better planned uh, discussion uh, that people are hopefully more interested in, maybe have some guests um, and you know have them probably every other week so that we can make them more substantive and uh, worth, uh, hopefully worth, uh, worth joining and participating in. So this is the first one of those. And uh, because we haven't been as good as we should have been at communicating about the DAO, the BISC DAO when it launched back in April, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to, to talk about that here today, go over the experience that we've had so far in the past uh, four months now that it's been. We've been through three cycles, I think fairly successfully, and we're just about to end the fourth cycle uh, tomorrow, the fourth proposal phase ends tomorrow. And um, yeah, I just wanna share our experiences, outcomes, and uh, for those of you guys who are not familiar, we'll go through just what the BISC DAO is very quickly. Let me share my screen so that you can see. I have just five, five slides planned. No more, hopefully, than one or two minutes each. We'll be done in 10 or 11 minutes. I'm gonna purposely make it uh, quick so that you don't have to you know, listen to me talk for too long, and then if you guys have any questions to fill in the gaps, we can, uh, we can uh, we can do that afterward. Or of course, feel free to jump in if you have any questions as I'm talking. Uh, share. There we go. All right, so this should be my screen. Let me make it. All right. All right, if you guys can't see that, just send me a ping me in, the, uh, in Zoom. Um, but this is the agenda for the call. Um, yeah, just a couple of handful of slides. Well, uh, pretty much what I just said. We'll talk about the DAO results and then um, challenges at the end of the call. So, um, yeah, for those of you guys not familiar, I'm not going to go into details. Uh, I don't have the time to, to do that at this point uh, to, to talk about the mechanics and details of how the DAO works. But basically, it's a mechanism built on Bitcoin to govern and fund the BISC network without a company. Um, a lot of people hear the term, the, the BSQ, the term token, and they get kind of scared. They're you know, like, what is this? Um, it's built on Bitcoin. BSQ is Bitcoin. It's colored Bitcoin. And uh, the goal is to help developers get paid for the work they do on BISC. BISC is free software, free as in freedom, um, open source. And you, know, you work on the BISC software. You don't have any bosses. You work how you want, when you want, from where you want and you get paid in Bitcoin. It's, um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, uh, we have a bit of a, a shortage of developers right now, but when I think about it, um, from what I know, it's kind of uh, what developer working in Bitcoin wouldn't want this. It's, it's kind of, it's amazing, I think, for, uh, for a developer who, a uh, highly skilled developer who um, is interested in the space, interested in Bitcoin, great opportunity. Um, as most free software projects don't have that economic model built in. Um, so I think quite, quite interesting, quite amazing. Um, from that, that perspective and then from the user perspective, um, you can actually... So I'm here, I'm getting a lot of noise uh, from... Is it Peter? Would you mind putting yourself on mute? Thank you. Um, and then the other side, uh, users can influence the direction of the software. Now, this is not very different from the typical open source model. Of course, you can always make open an issue or pull request or whatever, um, get in touch with the developers. Um, but with the BISC DAO, it's a little bit more formalized. We'll talk more a little bit about how that works. Um, but that's the, the basic gist of it. Uh, you can, with the BISC DAO, uh, you have an economic model built into the software that pays developers, accommodates users, and makes the whole thing sustainable um, through its 
built-in economic model. This is a snapshot of the, as of about an hour ago, of the current uh, past six proposals that were made in the current voting cycle. So um, I like this screenshot in particular because you can see the first four proposals that you see are, are compensation requests. So these are from contributors to the project, either for uh, development or uh, translations or running infrastructure or some kind of contribution that made the network better. Uh, so here they are making requests for compensation. Below that, you see uh, two proposals for changing a parameter. Now these are by Delta Handler. I don't recognize that name as a contributor, so I'm assuming that they're a trader or a user in some, some form, um, but they're just a person who's uh, been following the network uh, really, you know, I guess, closely and seeing the, the balance between uh, BSQ issued, BSQ burned, and the market. Uh, the market for BSQ has been relatively strong uh, for such a young market. And um, they're proposing a, an increase in the BSQ fees in order to make the, uh, the, the sustainability a little bit better, the balance a little bit better. Because right now, or until recently, we were burning a lot less BSQ than we were issuing. There was a lot more work being done than, um, than BSQ being burned. And that created a very inflationary dynamic, which is not good for the network long term. Um, again, something we'll talk about more in, in a second. But the last thing I want to note on this slide is that each of these proposals that you see is a Bitcoin transaction. So going back to what I said before about BSQ being colored Bitcoin, um, every action on the DAO is a Bitcoin transaction. So proposals are Bitcoin transactions. Votes, when you vote on a proposal, that's also a Bitcoin transaction. Um, vote reveal transactions are also uh, Bitcoin transactions. Um, so everything is, is built on Bitcoin and um, really I think that's, that's another really cool thing about the DAO is that it shows another use for Bitcoin. We always think about it as a store of value and you know, currency, whatever it is, you, however you think of Bitcoin, but um, you know, this, this model for running a productive social organization uh, with you know, governance to, to control strategy and to, to fund, to distribute funding from uh, consumers to producers, uh, it's being done with Bitcoin on BISC with the BISC DAO right now. And it's been fairly successful, I think, for the past four months now. Um, I'll skip that and come back to it. I wanna talk, just since I was talking about the uh, success of the DAO, what does su success look like? Well, in the past four months, through the past three cycles, we've issued a total of 114, almost 115,000 BSQ. These are through compensation requests. So people do work, make requests, and are issued new BSQ in the amount, an aggregate total of 100, almost 115,000 BSQ. And the network has burned a little over 50,000 BSQ. So that's the other side of the market. That's people, traders, who have bought BSQ and used that BSQ as trading fees where they would have otherwise paid BTC. And the incentive there, of course, is that BSQ fees are lower than BTC fees to encourage their use and um, in the process paying contributors for their work. So 50,000 BSQ, um, keep in mind that uh, to make a trade uh, with BSQ, you're, you're burning tiny amounts. I mean, in the early days, it was like a decimal, like 0 0.5, 0 0.8 BSQ sometimes, depending on the size of your trade, um, you know, on up to like five or 10 or a little bit more for like the really big two BTC Monero trades. But um, 50,000 BSQ being burned in, in a span of about four months is, is a lot. If you go to the explorer, uh, explorer.bisc.network, you'll see that people are using BSQ to make, uh, to make trades every minute almost, every, depending on when, what time of day you look, but it's, it's being used quite well. The take up has been quite good, I think. Um, in the meantime, we've seen record volume. June, uh, yeah, June was an incredibly amazing month for volume. Um, we broke all the records we've ever seen. Um, not much to say there. I mean, volume is, is 
done amazing. Um, and we also see continued development on the software itself. I know there were a lot of, uh, the reason I'm saying this is that there were, there were a few people, a lot of people who kind of didn't really have too much faith in, or I shouldn't say faith, but confidence in the DAO. How are things going to go when the DAO is launched, when the founder leaves, the original founder Manfred left about a month after the DAO was put in place in May. And there was some concern over how is this network going to continue without the strong figurehead, without the, the human element in place. Um, things could be better. I'll go over that in uh, the last slide, but um, you know, both, hands, I, both ends have held up better than I would have expected. Volume has been great and development has continued um, in, in spite of everything. So uh, going back to this slide, the only point I wanna make here is that there, there's a two-sided market on BISC uh, with the BISC DAO. So you have traders who want BSQ to make trades for trading fees, and you have contributors who want to earn BSQ as compensation for their work on the BISC software. Um, I don't know too much about other tokens and other you know, crypto, so quote unquote, mechanisms out there that purport to make two-sided markets. Um, BISC has actually done it. The software has you know, been in operation now for four months. Um, the market for BSQ seems fairly healthy to me. We see trades every day. Um, contributors have sold the BSQ that they've earned um, for a real Bitcoin. And um, yeah, it's a self-contained market with you know, two, two sides to it that, uh, that's you know, done fairly well so far from a pac practical standpoint. And again, you can see uh, trade, uh, trade by trade, you can see transactions on explore.bisc.network to see what that looks like. Um, uh, transaction by transaction. Uh, so one thing I might have mentioned before that we haven't done so well is communicate the results of, of the DAO um, as cycles have came and went. So um, we're going to do that better going forward. Uh, but for now, uh, we can just go over the first three cycles. Numbers are here. Um, these numbers add up to the number that I mentioned before. I think it was like 100 something thousand BSQ issued. Um, these are the numbers broken down by cycle. Um, we, as well as the BSQ burned, broken down by cycle. Aside from issuance, there is the you know, other proposals. So in the first cycle, we had uh, bonds for important roles were locked in. So contributors uh, holding high stakes roles that can be, um, violated or, or uh, in which foul play can take place, locked in bonds so that in case foul play did take place, uh, folks can uh, make the network aware and uh, put up a vote to confiscate those bonds. Those were done in the first cycle. Uh, there's still some more roll bonds to be locked, but uh, a number of them were done in the first cycle. And in the past two cycles, cycle two and cycle three, we saw BSQ fees increased. Um, I know some people were kind of alarmed by this, but uh, this was planned. Uh, BSQ fees were artificially low, uh, not artificially, but they were very low to start out with uh, in order to encourage adoption. Uh, I think there were 90% discount was what it was uh, over BTC uh, when the DAO was launched, but that's not sustainable. Uh, you can see the first cycle, we, were, we burned only 2,500 BSQ. We issued 70,000 almost. Um, so fees had to go up, and as you can see, as fees, go, as fees went up, of course, issuance went down as well, but um, you can see more of a balance. We went from 2,500 BSQ being burned to 10,000 to 20,000, and uh, we're almost, I think, at our 0.4% uh, target. We'll be there, uh, if not this cycle, probably in the next couple cycles, we'll hit it, and uh, hopefully keep this ratio of BSQ issued to BSQ burned more in control so that folks who, who acquired BSQ aren't holding this you know, ridiculously inflationary uh, thing, token, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, so I think as far as results go, that's pretty much the summary. Uh, I know I went through it very quickly. I just wanted to, I didn't want to bore you with, uh, looks like we're already at, how far are we in? About 15 minutes in already gone a bit longer than I wanted, but um, yeah, 
no major issues. We have had some issues with Dow state uh, synchronization. Uh, there were some issues with seed nodes, but those um, should be gone now. We just had a hot fix this morning, 1.1.5 of the software to hopefully get rid of that, uh, that issue. So if you're gonna be making proposals or voting, please make sure you upgrade before you do any of that, just to be safe. Um, last slide, I just wanna talk about downsides. Things have gone well, but things could have gone, uh, could be better. There are some issues, some challenges that we're facing right now. Um, some are easier to overcome than others. So starting off with the more difficult ones uh, on the top, leadership and developers. So when Manfred left, uh, Manfred was kind of like, the, I mean, in my opinion, he was very strong in you know, pulling people together and leading, um, leading the project. And once he left, um, things you know, have continued, but not at the pace that they did before. And we've, I think we've gotten a couple of new developers uh, come in, which is promising, but I think a difficult longer term question we have to ask ourselves is what, what, what it says here, how does the leadership work when you have no leaders? When, um, you know, I, I think the, 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 the hope is that people who, who choose to be contributors to BISC are strong enough uh, individually to lead themselves and in the process lead the network. Um, but it's something I think we're going to have to pay attention to uh, to see if that actually works or do we need more uh, to propel the project forward. Developers, we, uh, we lost probably two to, three, two to three people of developers, two to three units of developers with Manfred because he worked uh, so much so, uh, so often. And so, um, and of course, we lost a couple, uh, I think one other key developer uh, we lost as well. And so we really need highly skilled folks to implement some key features uh, like account signing, like the new trade protocol. Um, and it's still an open question as to, to how we do that. I think ideologically, this is, is about as close to perfect as you're going to get. It's free software. It's, you know, it's all about freedom and um, you know, work how you want, you treat it like an adult, you're not told what to do, um, you work on what you want. If you don't like UI, you can do, you know, network related stuff. If you don't like that, you can do something else. You pick what you want to do. Um, and I think a lot of developers should find that appealing, but the flip side is, how the heck do you explain this to people? What is this? What is Bitcoin? You know, in the Bitcoin bubble, it's very easy to to assume that everybody knows what it is, but it's really just still a small minority of the world. You go out to conferences and to events, and well, a lot of developers, they don't want to touch it. Um, so assuming you get, that, get past that hurdle of Bitcoin, um, you know, what, is the, what is BISC, what does it do, what is it DAO, how does it work, how do I get paid? Um, a bit of friction there, and I think we need to figure out how to, how to get past that in order to really attract new developers. So that's a challenge we need to, we need to meet and then the third one, which you know, hopefully should be the easiest, is communication. Like I mentioned a couple of times, we haven't been communicating the DAO as well as we, as we probably should. What is the DAO um, still is, is a hard question to answer for me, and I've been talking about this for months. Um, making it more approachable, making the results better known to those who are following it is certainly something we could also do better as well. So that's it. Uh, that's what I have for you guys so far. Um, any questions, concerns? Uh, I know I went every, through everything quite quite fast, but uh, uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I didn't know that the instance and burning of PSQ were almost balanced now, and this is yeah. great. Yeah. And uh, I have a question, which I know the answer, but. Uh, the parameters, when are changed on the DAO, uh, when they are bought and the people agree with it, uh, are changed automatically on the system or someone has to program it? Yeah, so the DAO parameters are adjusted immediately. Uh, as soon as the, uh, the, the voting results are known, the uh, parameters are, are changed immediately. It's the bigger, like, strategic things like, you know, strategy or, you know, uh, 
things that require human intervention that are not DAO parameters in the code that of course need to be implemented over a longer period of time. But formal DAO parameters go into place immediately. Yeah, but anyway, that was fantastic when I saw it on uh, working on the last cycle. That was amazing. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, when I saw that the fees were raised automatically mm -hmm. on the last cycle, yeah. that was amazing for me. I didn't expect that. Oh, yeah. Well, that's why I think it's better. We, we really need to communicate better. I think that, I mean, there was a, there was a proposal about increasing fees that was d debated for, for a few weeks, but it was on GitHub, and I don't think there was an attempt to tell the broader community about it on the forum, on Twitter, on Slack. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it came, came as a surprise to a lot of people. And, I mean, personally, my goal is going to be to avoid that from happening and really broadcast it more. Any proposal that's made for fees or whatever else so that it's not a surprise to, to you or to anybody else. Yeah, well, the, the biggest surprise for me was that the change were made automatically. The fee raise yeah. was an issue because I was reading the, the GitHub and that. Maybe for other people it was, but that's not the problem. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, let me get out of this. Let me stop sharing my screen. Okay. Cool. Um, anything, uh, anything else folks want to discuss about the DAO so far? Hey. Hey, it's Pedro. Hi. Hey. I have a quick, quick question. I, I haven't. I've been kind of working on a lot of other stuff, so I haven't been paying a lot of attention. But I wonder if there's a way to kind of engage people more to participate in the DAO. I, I, for instance, have not been paying a lot of attention to the voting and the the process. Um, and I was also wondering. I came into the call a little bit later, so I don't know if you already discussed this, but how is the how's the voting been uh, going on? Is, is there been a lot of participation? Uh, people like, is there any contention? People kind of, what's the word, uh, refuting the results? What's how is that process been? Yeah, it's a good question. So for your first question uh, or first item. I guess it just pretty much goes back to what I was saying a little earlier. Just we need to do a better job of communicating um, proposals and DAO cycles because I mean, unless you're you're involved with the project itself on a day-to-day -day basis, it's very easy to just have no idea what's going on with the DAO. Um, so I think communicating it on all our channels on Twitter, on forum, uh, maybe a little bit more on Slack, the blog. Um, the results, the current standings of the cycles, when the proposal phase is ending, when the voting cycle is ending, or the uh, voting phase is ending, um, definitely should be doing that better so that people, more people can get involved, more people can vote. I haven't seen, um, num let, me look, let, me look, let me look up the numbers right now. So it looks like in the past cycle three, we had 302 votes on uh, 21 proposals. That's, um, that's pretty good. Yeah, so it's pretty good. I think the only caveat to that is I believe that each, like, 302 votes is each vote. So it's like, you know, you, when, when you vote, you can vote on, like, you know, all the proposals. Like, if there's 20 proposals, yeah, of course, of 20 course. votes. Yeah, but that means that there's, like, at least 10 people actively voting. At least, yeah. No? More than 10, yeah. So it's, it's a good number, a good bunch of people. And I, th I mean, this is with zero promotion, zero communication. So I think once we start that and make people aware, it should be. Yeah, yeah and, and to your point, it's already so hard to explain Bitcoin and uh, the DAO that even if you take it to Twitter to explain or to promote, uh, to engage people on the voting, that might be so confusing for everybody else. Yeah, on the flip side, it might help when people start seeing, just, just start by virtue of just seeing it. They might just and participating it. They might start to understand it better through uh, just practice and experience. Cool. 
cool. That's good news. Yeah, yeah. Anything else you guys would like to, to cover? I'll probably make a, a blog post out of this just to cover the first three cycles, have a record of it that people can look at, and then you know, going forward have uh, a blog post for each cycle and announcements on Twitter and you know, make it more, put it, put it out there a little bit more so we don't have to do a big catch up six months later. All right, this may be wait a couple more seconds for any last minute thoughts. I just wanna say one last time, make sure you upgrade. If you're gonna make, be making a proposal or voting, uh, make sure you upgrade your software to version 1.1.5. Just launched this morning to make sure you don't have any issues with your DAO state or any kind of synchronization issues. Hi. Oh, hi, I don't know. Uh, I just uh, wanna say today I placed um, a sell uh, order and uh, for BSQ it, uh, it went smooth, but uh, I had to copy past the address um, of uh, the BSQ destination fund and uh, I find it a little uh, difficult uh, for uh, the first one and I uh, just wanted to say maybe we had to make a, a video about uh, the process of buying and selling BSQ token because uh, maybe it's, uh, I, I could not find the information myself in the first place. So that's why I had to ask on Slack. So I suppose maybe we should make a video on, on it. And also I uh, communicate with one guy on the Slack forum and he's doing tutorials. And we already made two languages available. We can maybe uh, push him a little bit to, to make marketing on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, again, something that I guess as an insider, I never really thought about, but it's certainly something if you, if you can, if it was a, if it was a hurdle for you, then that's, it's not, not a good sign for, uh, for other, other people. So, um, is it the, uh, that kiss Bitcoin that you were referring to for the video? Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I talked with him today and, uh, I found out that uh, his video was quite uh, good, I think, and his was he said he was motivated to to make more tutorials it was yeah. uh, just the first one so i think we should we should encourage him and the other translator to help uh, to on focus on the subtitle subtitles on youtube video it can help a lot i think with uh, just a little effort yeah sure i i spoke to i didn't speak to the guy behind that video specifically but i spoke to someone else who was working with him and i encouraged him to make a proposal for uh, you know, for a series of videos, uh, whatever he wants to cover, so that he can, you know, know what he's earning for it and have a little bit more predictability and hopefully make some better videos. Because I think the first one was pretty good. Exactly. So, yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll uh, try to prioritize the BSQ trading. Thanks Perfect. for uh, for raising that. Thank you. Yeah. And I guess while I have you guys here, just really quickly before we end the call, any, any uh, words of uh, feedback or opinions on this format for the call uh, as opposed to our typical growth call? Did you find it better, worse, too long, too short, too, many, too much talking? No, no, it was good to me, very clear, as, uh, as smooth as, as I was uh, riding a river. <laughs> I understand clearly, so it's good to me. Okay, cool. Good to hear. Good with me too. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, the other ones look like only a meeting for devs. Now uh, it looks like it's a little bit more open for other people. Oh yeah, no, this this call was never meant for devs. We, we usually we had a separate uh, a separate call for developers, and this was more for like uh, marketing, so to speak, or liquidity and that kind of thing. But yeah, if you have the impression that it was that it was for devs, then it was the wrong impression, and it was a sign that we were doing even worse than we than we, than we thought we were. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah, my my impression changed a bit when I started discussing with Felix and Manuel and this about what were you discussing? Uh, the security measures, the new security measures. Uh, that that's when I I. So that maybe I could uh, to 
to this. Uh, hey, I'm sorry, you're, you're cutting out. I, I didn't catch all of what you said. Well, then don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> Let's go. Just, just send me a message and uh, yeah, well, let, let me know uh, maybe on Slack or something. Cool. Any, any last words? Otherwise, we'll uh, call it a wrap. Cool. Thank you guys all for joining. We'll see you again in uh, probably two weeks. Probably make these uh, bi-weekly, so two weeks from now. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.